Mr. Gooch, we'll start with you with a one minute, uh, rather two minute introduction, please. My name's Don Gooch. Um, I live over in the Emma area here in Buncombe County. I'm the lead detective at the Woodford Police Department. I've been in law enforcement for over 22 years. I uh, was raised in law enforcement. My father was law enforcement. My uncle was law enforcement. Uh, I have a Bachelor of Science degree from Clemson University in marketing of all things. Really plays well in law enforcement. Uh, I have a Master's degree in Public Affairs from the Institute of Criminal Justice from Western Carolina University. Uh, I'm also, uh, I serve proudly with a little organization most of y'all ought to be aware of called the United States Army. Uh, I am a Gulf War veteran. I was a combat engineer and uh, served pr proudly overseas uh, during that conflict. Um, top of that, I also own a small business. I've owned a business for uh, 12 and a half, going on 13 years uh, that we uh, have on the property. It's turned into a very successful business uh, that involves uh, it's a, it's a gun business. I'm not going to make no secret in it. We teach firearms. We teach uh, a lot of people how to shoot. We do the carry concealed handgun classes. And uh, we've been very proud of the, the successes we've had with some of our female academies uh, in teaching conf confidence to them, giving them the ability to, to be able to not be afraid, uh, to empower them and not be afraid of what we deal with in society. That's a little bit about me. I am married. Uh, my wife's Barb is in the back of the room. Uh, I am a father and a grandfather. I have four children and three grandbabies and a two-year-old that gives me nightmares. Uh, and, and if you can't tell from my accent, I am from the mountains of North Carolina. Uh, I had a college professor one time beg me to get rid of my accent. He said it didn't make me sound professional. And uh, I pretty well stuck to my guns, no pun intended. So uh, thank, thank everyone for being here tonight. I had to get rid of my accent. <laughs> I would. <laughs> Holly, please. Thank you. Um, well, hi, my name is Holly Jones, and I'm running to be one of your two uh, representatives from District 1 on the County Commission. I became a resident of Buckham County about 16 years ago, and I came to this community to, for a job opportunity to be an executive director of the YWCA of Asheville and held that job for about 16 years. Uh, the mission of the YWCA is the empowerment of women and the elimination of ra racism. And those issues of social justice is what also uh, not only pulled me into that professional career here in the county, but also got me interested in uh, elected office as well. Um, since coming on the local government scene uh, a few years back, I've been, uh, I think, a, a consistent, clear voice for issues of equity. Um, I have a Master's of Public Health and a Master's of Divinity, and I studied public policy in undergraduate uh, from Carolina. My husband is a retired small bus businessman and an educator. I have a fifth grade daughter, uh, Isaac Dixon, one of the great public schools here in our county. Uh, in fact, my whole family is very grounded in public education. My mom was a teacher for 30 years, and my brother is still uh, teaches in one of those uh, poorest school districts in, uh, in North Carolina, down in Hanson County. Um, I've been privileged to serve on uh, a couple of different boards, the Asheville City Council as well as uh, the Buckingham County Commission. I've been, ooh, 30 seconds. So um, <laughs> I wanted to just tell you if I'm reelected that I will be pretty much uh, what you've seen is what you will get going forward. I will continue to do my homework. I will listen and learn from my constituents. I will speak my voice and push the envelope and vote my conscience. Um, and I'll fight for my county for what is right. Um, serving in elected office has uh, been an honor. And every day I try to treat people with kindness and respect. And that's how I'll go forward. And I appreciate your vote. All right. Mr. Newman. <clears throat> Uh, thanks, Jerry, and thanks to the League of Women Voters and all the other organizations that are sponsoring the event tonight. Um, it's great to be here. Uh, my name is Brownie Newman, and uh, I believe this is the first forum that has been held for candidates since you know Holly and I had a primary election. I, I guess there wasn't a primary on the other uh, on the Republican side, so things are pretty busy leading up to May, but it's been pretty quiet since then. So it's great that that events like this are being held to really start getting the community focused on on this election. So I appreciate the chance to be here. Um, <clears throat> uh, my wife and I live not far from here in the uh, Montford neighborhood, just uh, north of downtown. 
Uh, we have two children who are in the public schools here in Asheville at Isaac Dixon Elementary. Uh, I grew up, um, I didn't grow up in Asheville, but I grew up not far from here, uh, down in Pickens County. Uh, all of the members of my family went to Clemson University before me, so uh, love, the, love the Tigers. I actually moved to Asheville to go to college myself at Warren Wilson College and uh, came here and uh, really loved Asheville and Buncombe County and uh, stuck, stuck around. Um, I was fortunate to serve two terms on the Asheville City Council as well. I appreciate everyone who supported me in my efforts to get elected on City Council and helped educate me about the issues uh, that people cared about and were interested in during the time I served on City Council. It was a real, it was a real honor and really affirmed to me that that local government is a place where, where people can come together and really make a difference. Um, so with that in mind, I decided to run for county commission. There's a lot of different issues I'm, I'm interested in on the county commission, from helping to create more living wage jobs in Buncombe County, helping to strengthen our schools, and to, uh, to support uh, Buncombe County becoming more of a leader for clean energy and energy independence, which is a real a real passion of mine. So thanks again for the opportunity to be here. I look forward to uh, talking about some of the issues. All right, we're going to jump right in then. And uh, Mr. Newman, since you mentioned jobs, we'll go ahead and start with you. What can you do to generate business opportunities for Buckham County? How sure. to create those? Sure. Well, I think that, you know, it's, you know, we've obviously, our country's been going through a, 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 one of the most severe recessions uh, in a long, long time over the last several years. And uh, that's impacted all communities across the country. Ours is no exception. But I think this is an area where we have seen some real success. I think the city and the county have worked together effectively to bring good paying jobs to, to our community. Uh, Buncombe County now has one of the lowest unemployment rates in North Carolina. Uh, we've seen a real uh, rebound in manufacturing jobs, bucking the trends that most of the country is looking at with you know, companies like Linamar and New Belgium coming to Asheville. These were tough uh, economic development projects that we, we competed hard for against communities across the country and we won. So I think we have success to build on. Some of the other things that we're doing to support small businesses that are successful are programs uh, such as partnering with Mountain BizWorks, which gives training opportunities for people who want to start their own business and providing aspiring uh, entrepreneurs with capital to start up new businesses and I think that's another success we can build on. All right, thank you. Ms. Jones. Um, to piggyback on some of the points that were, were just previously made, I do think that part of our recent success has been that a lot of players have, have been on the same page. The, the Economic Development Coalition, the, the Advantage West, as well as local governments have come together and put their turf aside. And as one of the more recent uh, new development, economic development prospects said, uh, when we came to Buncombe County, uh, y'all rolled out the red carpet instead of the red tape. So I think that's part of what we want to continue to be, is be a united force. And also, uh, I think one of the important things that local government can do is to continue to invest in the quality of life things and our workforce too, because having a strong workforce is something that, that's important for the county commissioners to invest in, and that's been part of how we've drawn jobs here recently. Thank you. Mr. Gouge? Going with the same, same tone here, is I definitely believe in, a, in industry coming back into the area. North Carolina was known for years uh, from the uh, furniture manufacturing uh, arenas, uh, bringing back plants such as, you know, some, some similar to the Beacon style plants to where we can not only meet the needs, you know, we are, we are adding to our education base here uh, with the advancements at AB Tech and their support of, of the, uh, the government and the programs that we're trying to implement and working with us uh, to, to bring in the right type of education. But we also got to understand that we have a lot of people in this county uh, that, that do not necessarily have certain educational skills, but through a, a, uh, a, an industrial setting uh, can definitely make living wages far beyond uh, what a, a tourist rate White would be. All right, thank you, Mr. Yale. What areas or departments or services do you think could be jointly administered by the city of Asheville and the county in order to achieve economies of scale and or efficiency? We'll start with you, Molly. Sure. Um, this is a this is always a popular question. I would and and, and the answers uh, unfortunately keep on coming up because we haven't done we haven't done a lot about this. 
So I would say that one of the areas that we could look closely at continues to be areas around kind of our parks and recreation. And I mean, not all facets of it, but I think there's some areas, there's some uh, arenas of parks and rec that serve the entire county, county and we could, um, we could be smarter about that. I think purchasing is another area that we could uh, combine for greater efficiencies. Um, those, those are the two that come that are top of mind. All right, thank you, Mr. Hughes. The one I would concentrate probably most on would be the uh, educational system that we have in Buncombe County. We have two different school systems, the Asheville School System and the Buncombe School System. Uh, they, they have their own administrative staffs. We have kids that live within the uh, confines of the Asheville city limits that are traveling to rentals uh, to, to go to school. I think we're doubling up certain services. We're, uh, extending bus travel times and definitely for the higher paying administrative jobs there's aspects that can be uh, combined uh, and have a unified school system in this county sure i mean i think there's probably a lot of opportunities out there ultimately for things that could be integrated or better coordinated you know ranging from you know educational opportunities even to law enforcement to planning, the city has a planning department, the county has a planning department. I think all of these are areas that could benefit from, from coordination or even, even integration in the long run. But you know, when we talk about city and county relationships, these are hard issues. I mean, the, the way things have been done in the past is uh, there's a reason for it and there's patterns of behavior and there's turf. I mean, none of these are easy. I would tend to agree with Holly that one of the most significant departments that are probably from a practical standpoint where some sort of real real uh, integration is possible, it would make a big difference probably is parks and recreation, because a lot of these are facilities that are broadly used by people from throughout Buncombe County, but in a lot of cases they're funded almost exclusively on the, on the shoulders of taxpayers in Asheville. So I think there's an equity question there, and, um, and there's, a, there's a case to be made that everybody in Buncombe County who uses them should help pay for them in the long run. All right, Mr. Hughes, we'll start with you on this. $40 million voted to fund a greenway. Where are these funds coming from? If a bond issue, who is the lead underwriter that would provide this kind of money for 10 to 20 years of 1 to 2%? I am all for greenways, but I definitely feel that monies can be spent uh, in other avenues. We're talking about consolidation here. We're talking about, uh, I had a conversation with someone here, you know, about the uh, homeless and the hungry in this county. I am for the Greenways. I do question spending $40 million of taxpayer money uh, when we have much more pressing issues on the table at this time. All right, thank you. Mr. Newman? Sure, go. We'll come back around. <laughs> no, sorry, I'll see what we're doing. I'm losing around. Yeah, that's fair. Sure, so, um, so I'm a big fan of Greenways. Um, uh, FLS Energy, who I work for, our offices used to be uh, located on Amboy Road, and we're now in the River Arts District, so we're near a lot of the greenways that have been built along the French Broad River. I see they are used by thousands of people every day, and uh, my kids love going out there on days where the weather is nice or even not so nice. It is amazing how heavily utilized these facilities are. I think uh, it's actually one of those types of infrastructure that for a relatively, in, in the big scheme of things, when we look at the county budget, for a relatively small investment in the big scheme of things, the impact that implementing the Greenways plan that has been developed with very broad and enthusiastic support from citizens in Buncombe County, there's very few things that will have as high of an impact on quality of life and economic development. I mean, when New Belgium came here and decided to invest $100 million in our riverfront that people have been talking about for decades and no one's done it, they're doing it, they specifically cited Greenways is one of the main reasons they came here. So I think there's a real right. economic development component to that. Mr. Newman, thank you very much. And a related question, would you support the use of eminent domain to acquire property for Greenways? Ms. Jones? Uh, no. The, can I also answer that other one too? So about the funding? Okay, I'm giving you yeah, sorry. Um, did I already answer that? No. no. Okay. Oh, no, I don't. Did I skip you? I apologize. I mean, I'm, I'm down here. You're quite skipping this time, too. I'm just having a moment. I really checked I out if I answered it. But, um, you're so, I, I also, cause I also wanted to clarify that the, the, the funding was not voted on. What was voted on at this point is the, was the plan, and I think the funding is, 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 com is forthcoming. And I believe that there's a vision within the, the, the volunteers as well as the staff that have put the plan together to really 
find ways that we can bring not just public dollars to bear, but also private dollars and, and really leverage some other opportunities there. So um, I do believe that that Greenways merits public investment. I don't. I don't. I wouldn't have voted for a $40 million plan, and that's not what happened. So, um, so in terms of the eminent domain, um, I we clarified that in the plan too, and made it very succinct that we that is not an option for the county commissioners going forward. At least that's what we called out in the, into the plan. Yeah, so. Mr. Huge, would you support the use of eminent domain to acquire property? No, in, in no way. I also wouldn't support any coercion of any form or fashion. If, if, if it's strictly voluntary uh, and someone supports this, I am all for that support. Uh, but eminent domain uh, for this project definitely does not classify into the, to the grounds that I think eminent domain was initially created. Mr. Newman? So I think that you know, from the Greenway development that we've seen in Asheville over the last several years, I mean, there's been very strong support among landowners. We've seen lots of landowners even donate property and donate easements for uh, for parks and greenways. Uh, anytime, I mean, I think it's important to remember that anytime property needs to be acquired for any public purpose, if it's a public park, if it's a road, if it's a sewer line or water line, a utility line, there's a legal and ethical requirement from government to fully compensate property owners for the fair market value of their property. And I would certainly never support anything other than, than that. I guess the, you know, the one thing I would point out is that I think that, that acquisition of property for a public purpose, uh, if they have gone through every effort to negotiate a fair market value transaction and it cannot be transacted, the public does need to reserve the right to acquire property through eminent domain for schools and roads, water lines, sewer lines, this is done every day. And I would not say that I'm public. In. So, so I in, your time in some cases, uh, I would not take that off the table. If it's Thank done, you market value. I want to remind you, if you have a question and you need a card to write it out, just raise your hand, we'll get you a card. Or if you have a question and you've already written it out, or once you do, raise the card again and we will pick it up. All right, we'll start with you, Ms. Jones. How would you change or add to the regulations on building of slopes, or is no change needed? Well, we adopted, um, maybe three years ago, a, a very strong, thorough, actually, I'm not sure if it's three years ago. Anyway, re, uh, I definitely was supportive of it whenever it happened, but um, a, a very thoroughly researched deep strokes ordinance, and I, Think we've got a good one. So I don't. I have not heard of any uh, problems today. I, I feel like it's uh, it's it's serving us well. My caveat around that is, though, because building has really slowed in these last few years, uh, there might be some unintended consequences that we just haven't experienced yet, just because of this lull in development that's come about. So at this point, um, I think it's serving it's serving its us as it needs to. Mr. Gooch. Yeah, the, the slope, uh, I, I wish it had been acted long before uh, as far as the steep slope development, uh, something that we kind of got, you know, a long time ago. Uh, so being able to protect uh, what we have, you know, in place at this time, I think would definitely be a priority. Uh, and, you know, like Ms. Jones has said, we development has s slowed down and is still going on, but it has definitely slowed down. And it's not really been as big an issue on the table at, at this time. Could be in the future. Mr. Newman. And I do not have any uh, specific you know, suggestions for modifying it at this time. I tend to agree with the comments that were made uh, already that some important steps were taken. And I'm sure all these ordinances can probably be improved to make them more user friendly and effective, but I don't have any specific suggestions at this time. All right. We'll start then with Mr. Gooch. As Buncombe's, Buncombe County's population ages, what should be the county's role in assisting with increasing transportation needs? We have got to start looking after more of our, our aging population in, in terms of we do have services that are currently in play. I think we ought to expand those services, but I think there are still some people falling through the uh, cracks. Uh, because they are not aware of all the services. I think we need to even go beyond what we're doing now, get even more of the churches, more of the uh, outlying areas uh, into play with this. Um, we Not everybody can rely on families. Uh, 
uh, to take care of certain things. Uh, and I think that's, you know, for people that's worked their entire lives, uh, they've, they've got to a point, and I think we do as a society have a responsibility to try to uh, afford them every avenue that we can, uh, and even with the services that we have. Mr. Newman? Sure. Um, you know, this is probably another arena. We, we, the question came up earlier about areas the city and the county can work together on. This is probably another area that, on reflection, would be a good one to focus on. You know, the city runs, I think the city runs a very, uh, a very good uh, community transit system for a city of our size, um, and there's a lot of interest in it. Uh, there's been a whole, you know, improved plan developed, and parts of that are being implemented. But particularly, you know, stronger partnerships between the city and the county, I think, would allow more of that to happen sooner. I mean, we need, we need transit to run on Sundays and not just, you know, six days out of the week. Particularly if there could be targeted improvements made that would help people who live around the edges of, of the urbanized area who need to work in the city to, to be able to better serve them. I think those, I think partnering on targeted improvements to the existing transit system between the city and the county is probably an area that would be the best focus. Uh, great points are being made um, by everyone at this table, but I think the things I would add to this conversation, in addition to trying to improve the actual transportation services, I think there is it's important value to think about where appropriate and where cost efficient, efficient, effective to bring the services closer to some of the, the seniors out in the county too. And we've made some efforts around this but some uh, outposts. So I think that's another way that we can we can serve our aging population. Uh, and I, I think in the future we also want to think about where we're developing uh, too. So I think to really incentivize our developments on, on transportation routes where when the partnerships improve and the ones that we have, that seniors actually can easily access the, the mountain mobility and other public transportation. All right. Uh, Mr. Newman, this is specifically for you. Please explain the reason your company was given the contract for the solar panels at the Inca School and was this appropriate for a city council member? Sure. Um, <clears throat> so the Buckingham County School Board, when they were making improvements at Inca, they decided to, as part of the re roofing of the uh, uh, school, they decided that they would like to have a solar energy system on the school. They went through a public request for proposals uh, that was open to any companies that wanted to do that. Our company submitted a proposal. Uh, I'm not aware if other companies did or not, but it was an open process. We submitted a proposal. They selected our company to, uh, to develop the project. Um, so I think it was appropriate. We followed, you know, all of it was very transparent. It was very open. Anybody who wanted to do it, as a as a city council member, uh, I would be prohibited by state law from doing any business with the city of Asheville. If I'm elected to the Buncombe County Commission, that same provision would prevent my company from doing any business with Buncombe County. So, in the future, if I am elected, that would be uh, that would not be appropriate or even permissible. But in the past, I was not even a candidate for Buckingham County when the school, when the Inca decided to uh, solicit proposals from the community. All right, thank you, Mr. Newman. We'll start with you on this question again, uh, Mr. Newman. Would you certify a TV channel for public access TV? Would I certify a channel? Um, perhaps I would need more information about what all that might that particular Find proposal might like that, right? might encompass. Okay. Ms. Jones? Uh, yeah, once again, kind of uh, hard to get your head around what the, what the intent of the question is. We, this, there's been a very painful conversation around our, our public teeth, our, our public access. I think that might be where part of it's coming from lately. So we would definitely need to, if, before re-entering that, understand our revenue streams and, and, and really get our, our business plan together prior to committing to that, yes. Mr. Gooch? Yeah, same same premise is basically looking back at it, funding, you know, what rate, everything that's in play. I would love to have it, but, you know, all things considered, and again, that'd be something we'd have to sit down and look at in its totality. Ms. Jones, we'll start with you. Explain the roles of county government and county business in creating education appropriate for the 21st century and what funding would be needed. Okay, there was a lot there. So the, the role the, the of county role government, of county government in creating appropriate education for the 21st century jobs. Uh, first thing I want to say is that the, the, the county commissioners have very uh, tight requirements of how much they can 
wade into the development of educational policy. That's what we've got school boards for, and we are we are limited by statute about even how the monies that we allocate can. There's not a lot we can say about it, frankly. So, um, so I would assume, and, and that carries forward. It's, we have a little bit more say around working with uh, AB Tech. So, it's. I'm kind of floundering here a little bit because of, of the statutes that I feel like we've been required to be under. I think always the conversations that happen between the, the, the school, city school board and the county school boards are, are important because we can talk about the, the, the workforce needs that we see in, in economic development recruitment. And uh, I'm currently serving on a, a, the STEM project for uh, the county schools, and that, I think that's a future area we need to focus more on. And just to clarify, STEM, you mean science, technology, engineering, engineering, and math. Okay. Uh, Mr. Hughes? Same room is, you know, looking at just, if, if it's nothing more than, and it's like Ms. Jones was saying as far as what statute limitations come into play, but at the same time, we, you know, definitely keep, continue to support, that support, uh, our primary uh, involvement, I think, has been, you know, with the uh, tax increase uh, involving AB Tech. Uh, I have taught at AB Tech for a long time in the criminal justice program and in the law enforcement program. Uh, and it is definitely one of the pinnacles of the state. North, uh, AB Tech's one of the only two uh, community colleges in the state of North Carolina allowed to train SBI agents uh, in the police academy. Uh, and that's just one example of, of the excellence that we just continue <laughs> to support uh, and as we're looking into the 21st century, or looking years to come. Thank you. Mr. Newman? Uh, just a couple of things I'd like to specifically talk about in terms of education. One is, you know, the county is responsible for capital improvements on the, on the public schools. I want to really applaud the county commission we have today in terms of uh, giving particular attention to some of the public schools in Asheville that are badly in need of attention, um, particularly Asheville Middle School um, is really um, it badly in need of improvements. A lot that are gone overlooked for far too long and so I think the county commission there's a lot of things for that Holly in particular the other thing is I think we just need to be willing to try new things I, I would this is not on the county commission's play right now but this I applaud the city school board for being willing to to look at things like the different 12-month calendar for schools in terms of uh, reducing the dropout rate and improving uh, lowering the achievement gap in schools I don't know if that's the right thing to do or not but I applaud their willingness and the courage to, to really look at out-of-the-box ideas that have not been tried before uh, because we've got to reduce the dropout rate, we've got to get more of our kids. We've got a great school system, but it needs to work for all of our kids. All right, a 30 second follow up for each of you. We'll start with you, Ms. Jones. Uh, workforce needs. What would you identify as the top workforce needs for Buncombe County? Um, I would think that, uh, well, I, the non traditional uh, arenas that are delivering on a higher wage, uh, I think, to try to uh, move people in that direction. I think that's the that's the way to go. I mean, particularly around women. I believe that's a, that's an important avenue to follow through on. Can you repeat right. that one more time? Okay. What would you identify as the top workforce needs for Bunko County? Well, I think it goes in. You know, given the jobs that we want to bring into the area, but I think we also you know really concentrate on some of the basic skills. Um, in, in my line of work, I come across a lot of. of different uh, types of people, different levels of education, and trying to bring everyone up to, to a successful level uh, to where they have a chance for most of the jobs that we do have in the area, uh, and then just continue uh, the aspects of uh, training and working with not only AB Tech, but All right. other companies. Mr. Hughes, thank you. Mr. Newman? Sure. I mean, just one other thing I would touch on is that in my opening remarks, I mentioned Mountain BizWorks and the you know, we're really a community of small businesses. Uh, we're dominated by small businesses, and I think helping more people who have an idea for starting their own business pursue that is, is probably the most effective investment we have for creating jobs in the community, and Mountain BizWorks has done a great job helping people go through training program to start a business, giving, giving them some of the tough startup capital to start their own business, and I think those investments have paid off many times, and I think, I think more investments there to start for people to help start their own business is a great, a great place to focus. Thank you. Mr. Hughes, can I, yes. Can we do one of those little follow-up things? <laughs> we'll give you 30 seconds. Keep it to workforce development. 
I mean, I think that I think the most important thing is to ask the workforce what they need, and and I'm not. And I think what they need are jobs at the end of the day, and that might sound trite, but it's kind of it sounds it feels very academic for me to come up with an you know an educational plan for for folks who are looking for jobs. I mean, what they need for first and foremost are opportunities to be hired. So that's Mr. Gooch, Would you like to add anything? <laughs> Well, it's just it's the same uh, the same premise as far as bringing people up to a standard that they they have that chance to compete in a job market, uh, the and competitive job market, and and though unemployment in this area uh, is is better than you know it's not as bad as what it is in other areas, we still have people that's out of work, and just working on that and continuing that goal on bringing them to that level. All right, Mr. Newman, would you like to add anything further? All right, thank you. All right, Mr. Hughes, please explain your understanding of the economic impacts of sustainability. Be as specific as possible in describing sustainability, its indicators, and how our ability to plan and create sustainability. As in terms of our work for our work area. Yeah, this is a completely different question. So this is sustainability in the big picture. <laughs> Well, one, you know, and if I'm reading the question, if I understand the question right, uh, one of the things that I look at in sustainability, you know, as the government as a whole, as the county as a whole, I think we need to reduce, uh, you know, the debt that we have as a county. Uh, I need, I think that uh, the, there are a lot of positive aspects in, in, in certain ratings. I think that we need to be a solvent county. Uh, we need to be able to stand without uh, relying on, on loans, funding, uh, that kind of aspect. I think that's going to be one of the key aspects to sustaining everything in the county. Uh, make sure we spend the money wisely, uh, the taxpayer money, and you know the understanding that grants, and, and when we receive grants from the government, uh, that is still taxpayer money. Uh, it is just being paid through from to a different entity, and we're just getting it back, and it's still being spent. Mr. Newman? Um, it's a pretty broad question. I'm not clear if it's meant to focus on more environmental sustainability or physical management. So I'm not sure what the intent of the person or the question is. But I mean, I'll just say from from an environmental sustainability standpoint, uh, I think those are issues that people in Buncombe County care a lot about. Uh, I think that one of the areas that uh, I would like to really focus on as a county commissioner is around uh, energy sustainability and, and Buncombe County becoming a national leader around clean energy and energy independence. Uh, one of the things I was very proud to be part of on City Council was our commitment to reduce our energy use and carbon footprint by 80%, and the Council adopted a policy to do that. And as a result, we've already reduced our energy use by more than 10%. We have a very specific plan to reduce it another 20% in just the next four years. And in, in addition to the environmental benefits, we're saving taxpayers you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars a year on our utility expenses. So that's, that's one place where we really decided to provide leadership on sustainability. And I'd like, and the county's doing a lot of good stuff there too, and I'd like to help that. Right. Um, just recently, I think in the spring, we the the Buckham County Board of Commissioners adopted their sustainability plan, and it's got I think five, maybe ten different arenas that there there are these indicators in, and I, I wouldn't begin to begin to tell you what all of them are. Um, a couple that I did want, would want, want to highlight have to do with um, development and how we. Uh, decide to, to what how we decide to build and I'm a, I'm a proponent of building you know up not out and on the transportation corridors I think that have, that's really key to our sustainability as a community uh, I also think another thing that's really exciting within the plan is this focus on local food uh, that is becoming more and more of an economic driver and obviously it's a way we can care for ourselves and, and feed ourselves too so I would kind of throw those two in the mix with the economic uh, sustainability and, and energy conservation. All right, thank you. Mr. Newman, I'll start with you. Are there specific areas of the budget where you think there might be savings and why? Sure. Um, you know, have not gone through the budget cycle yet, looking forward to participating in that project uh, in that in that process. I mean this is not this is not a big ticket item in the big scheme of things, but I do think that it's a symbolically important area. Uh, I think that the decision the commissioners made to reduce their to reduce their own compensation was the right thing to do uh, to make it more consistent with what local elected officials and county government are paid around the state. I, 
specifically supportive Holly's proposal to further reduce it to really make it more in line with, with what I think most people in our community would think is reasonable for compensating our local elected officials for. So I disagree with the decision of the majority of the commission not to support that motion. I will support that if I'm elected to the county commission. Okay. Ms. Jones? I um, uh, have been very vocal about trying to really delve into the budget and understand um, you know, where are, are arenas that we might find savings and I believe that's a partnership with staff to kind of come up with the, with these opportunities to, um, to find efficiencies and, and our staff's done a great job. They have they've identified systems that will streamline our client services as well as make the services a better uh, and more humane for our, our clients. For example, our decision to close our primary care as we knew it with the Buncombe County Health Department is a, uh, has really, we've been able to use that money and double almost the number of folks that we've been able to serve. So that's not a direct dollar savings, but in fact, it's, you know, it's a double efficiency of those dollars. So it, I think that's, those are the types of innovations that I would want to continue to work to, to find. Right now, we I believe our county work staff is probably the lowest it's been in years as far as the number of county employees that we have. Uh, we definitely, I know it's been in the news, the uh, high rate of, uh, of salary for some of the upper echelon people. Uh, and I think that's definitely something that can be looked at. But at the same time, we definitely need to protect the workforce that we've got uh, that's in play. I think it's more of going line by line looking exactly where the monies are being spent as opposed to looking like like Mr. Newman said, a big ticket item. I don't think that's necessarily there because they've been many years of streamlining uh, due to budgets and due, due to economies and, and the like. So I think it's just breaking down where the dollars are going uh, with the staff, with the commission. Uh, you know, I definitely support the reduction. Uh, of the salary to make it in line with the, the rest of the state. I don't, I don't see any problems with that. Uh, and basically, you got to start with your leadership and uh, go from there. All right, thank you. Ms. Jones, we'll start with you. Childhood obesity mm -hmm. rates in North Carolina, as well as the nation alarming. What role, if any, does Buncombe County government play in addressing this? Oh, I think they have a lot of, um, there's a lot of ways. I think first and foremost to continue to invest in these infrastructures that we know will facilitate movement. I think uh, we talked about conversations with the schools before around education. I think this is a really important one that we have with our public health officials with the, the education and how we're working with children to uh, uh, encourage also not only movement but, but good eating. And there's, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, successes that we've had along the way too. I think the way that we've promoted our local food production is also a piece of the picture too. There's, there, this is this is one of my passions, so it's going to be hard to see that stop sign come up. But, um, but anyway, I think I think it's it's a vital thing for, for with education as well as infrastructure development. You did well there, see, <laughs> Mr. Cooch here to hear <laughs> Basically, on the, on the obesity, obesity issue is, is basically we're going into the schools and putting it part of the educational process. Uh, I am a proponent of, of definitely the right foods, for, especially with developing uh, children, but also the right mentality. Uh, I think uh, society as a whole, we have an issue with uh, children playing video games all the time and not outside like it was when I was a kid running through the woods uh, for 12 straight hours every day. Uh, when the only time you came home was when mama called you. Uh, and those days are gone, and I think we really need to support getting the children back out, getting involved in activities. Uh, and those activities can be sports, but just for, they, for them to understand the importance of it and how that's going to play out to the rest of their lives. Uh, and the health issues that we now know uh, as you get older uh, almost, you know, uh, become exponentially worse. Uh, so I think it's a big education process. I think we ought to really push it in our schools. All right, thank you, Mr. Newman. Mr. Newman. Sure. Um, I, I want to get back to the uh, to the to the Greenway piece again because I think that you know, I think that is. Uh, you ready to use your, your minute yeah. here for the Greenway? Yeah, I do. Because now I think that's I think that's a, that's a response to this question. I mean, I think creating a walkable, bikeable environment in our community is is you know is key to this. 
I mean, I think when, sometimes when we think about things like, you know, bike paths and sidewalks and greenways and public parks, I mean, they kind of come across as like, this is sort of this, that would be nice, but it's not essential. But I think it is essential. I think it is essential to give our kids a safe place to go play outside. And it's, you know, it's not safe to ride your bike down the street. And the greenways we have give people that place where you can go play. And as a parent, you don't have to worry about what's gonna happen to your kid. And so I think these things are not kind of a, a frivolous nicety. I think that they are core to public health and, and just having a great community. So I think building that infrastructure is, is really a key part of this. And you know, the local farms and getting kids involved in that stuff too is, um, is really a great opportunity as well. All right, Mr. Gouge, we'll start with you. These are two related questions at the same time. Uh, a bit controversial recently with the county. Would you support adding sexual orientation and gender identity to the county's non-discrimination clause? Would you support offering domestic partner benefits to county employees? That was, uh, apparently I was kind of misunderstood. Uh, I am against discrimination in its entirety. Uh, that is the big issue. The one problem I have is creating special groups. Uh, my question is where do we stop with this in terms of uh, are we going to stop discriminating against tobacco users? Are we going to stop discriminating, you know, are we gonna, when are we going to stop putting these lists and just all of us start kind of figuring out discrimination is wrong and it's wrong on its face. Uh, and that's it. As far as support, uh, I am very uh, devout in my beliefs. Uh, the voters of the state of North Carolina passed the law. Uh, that is over. Uh, that was passed by the majority of the voters of North Carolina. And that is basically the role of the county commissioners is, is to uphold the law of the state of North Carolina. You're speaking of the uh, marriage amendment to the Council of State Constitution? Okay. Mr. Newman? I think the I think the responsibility of the county commission is to make it very clear that Buncombe County is a safe, inclusive community for all the citizens and all the families in Buncombe County. And the the passage of Amendment One and writing this, which wrote discrimination into our state constitution, makes it all the more important that Buncombe County make it clear that while other places in Buncombe, in North Carolina may not feel like a safe, welcoming place to live, we are. And so I think that makes it all the more important that we ensure equal workplace rights for all of our public employees. Uh, that's, that's why I supported domestic partnership policy as a city council member. I will support it as a county commissioner. We owe it to our public employees that they should not be able to be fired. Right now it is legal to fire people for, for, for no reason related to their job, but only because of their sexual orientation. That's, that's wrong. If you believe discrimination is wrong, let's make it a policy that says it's wrong. And, uh, but I think it also sends an important message to everyone in the community about who we are as a community. Right. Ms. Jones? Uh, I do support uh, including in our non-discrimination uh, policy uh, the protected class of sexual orientation and gender identity. We do, the, there's mounds of research that tell us that those employees, if, if you're uh, from the LGBT community, you, are, you experience harassment and uh, termination, unjust termination at a much higher rate. This is documented across the board. So uh, hearing from the, our employees that are members of that community, they want this. And uh, for no other reason than that, uh, we should do it tomorrow. And, and I'm also supportive of the domestic, par domestic partner benefits, uh, being part of Buckingham County's personnel policy too. Uh, my reading and, and understanding of Amendment 1 is that, and, and actually all the propaganda for it, uh, and I was against it, said that it would not impact the uh, employer's ability to provide these benefits. So I would uh, hope that we can do that in the county in the future and treat all our employees the same. All right, thank you. Our final question, as I believe, timekeeper, we're close. Uh, the County Board of Education this summer utilized some schools for summer lunch programs for kids who qualify for free or reduced school lunches during the school year. Would you support the continuation of this program? Uh, Mr. Newman, and this was a federally funded program, and there was a small two hundred and something dollar uh, gap that was that was paid for by an outlaw. Uh, honestly, I'm not familiar with all the details of the program, so I'd probably just like to get more information about it before having a specific position on that. Okay. Yes, Absolutely, this is part of, and, and, and if you saw the the meals that they were providing, they were they were very healthy meals. 
Uh, and part of what I've experienced in this community is our families that are struggling, and literally you, you would go into their homes and there is nothing in the refrigerator. And when school ends, these family situations become dire. So uh, obviously there were was, there was some sites that did better than others in terms of the distribution of it. I think those are the types of things that can be tweaked. But I, I really see no better use of public dollars than providing low-income children healthy meals uh, during the summer to help them continue to learn and, uh, and grow and become part of our future workforce. Mr. Gary. Yeah, the same Corona said it's definitely a, a, a very key element that we can support. Uh, basically, the, it goes back to what we were talking about is being able to learn how to eat healthy, uh, but you got to have the food to be able to eat healthy. Uh, and I think that's one of the things that uh, I definitely have no problem in that. Uh, I am definitely, uh, you can call this fortunate or unfortunate, but uh, being overseas during the, during the war, I seen some things that uh, basically food, uh, some kids wasn't eating unless it was us soldiers giving them our MREs. Uh, so given that, that's definitely a program that we, if it's not expanded now, we need to expand it uh, and definitely keep that one running. All right, I want to thank our candidates at this time. They will be, uh, at the conclusion of this, they'll be available for uh, furthering the discussion at the back there. I want to remind everybody, open voting, uh, early one-stop voting, rather, opens October 18th, by the way. I found these nifty cards upstairs in the library that has all the locations. You can pick one up maybe on your way out if that part's not locked. But you can go to vote411.org for all of the information. Your districts and polling locations may have changed, so please, you again, go to vote411.org for that information, or ablwv.org, Asheville Bunker League of Women Voters.org.